ServiceNow Knowledge 14 is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Hi, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. We are live here at uh, ServiceNow Knowledge. We're at Moscone. This is day one. Uh, the conference kicked off, uh, actually sort of pre-kickoff on Monday. They had the analyst meeting, financial analyst meeting. There's a CIO event going on uh, across the street. Over 100 CIOs, or a couple hundred is what we heard. We've had several of them on today. Real theme of the conference is transforming IT, really shifting IT from a, a cost into a value center. We've heard this a lot from CIOs over the years, uh, but they've had a hard time doing it. Uh, ServiceNow seems to be you know, putting forth a recipe, and it's not just ServiceNow. Uh, when you walk the exhibit hall, like any strong conference, you see a lot of exhibits, you see people in the ecosystem, companies, partners, spending money to be here. Why are they here? Because there's business being done. Why is there business being done? Because ServiceNow is creating value uh, and creating an ecosystem around it. We see that as vital. Um, you certainly saw it with the VMware ecosystem. You know, I remember back in 2010, Jeff, uh, guys like Todd Nielsen saying for every dollar spent on the VMware license, you know, 15 or 18 dollars is spent in the ecosystem. That was huge in terms of, you know, the value that the partners got out of that. Interesting, you know, we're seeing sort of shifts now and you know, VMware gobbling up some of that value, but that's natural too, that's what software companies do. Um, they either do that or they die. Uh, so, but ServiceNow is within the early days of the development of that ecosystem. Again, I see it as critical. The other really proof point is talk to customers. Um, just walking around last night, speaking to customers, asking them what they're doing. We, you know, last year, remember, it was, it was really a dominance of, of problem management and change management, and that's still the starting point, but you're seeing a lot more innovation beyond those core applications. Uh, financially, this company is growing like crazy. One of the hottest companies in the business, I would say, my, 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 my big companies to watch, Workday, Splunk, Tableau, ServiceNow, you know, Salesforce a little bigger, but those four really, you know, crushing it from the software standpoint, ones to watch. This company's growing 60 plus percent a year. They're on track, I think, to do 700 million this year. They haven't, they, their guidance is less than 700, but I think they'll do 700. Um, they are expanding overseas, going after the global 2000, so financially, it's just a really interesting case. They're led by Frank Slootman. The, 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 the dynamic at the top is really interesting. You got Fred Luddy, who's this like mad genius, really interesting fellow. We're going to have him on tomorrow morning to kick things off. He's a great guest, absolutely fascinating individual, and, and quite humble. I mean, he's a guy who stepped down as CEO just before the public offering. They bring in Frank Slootman, big personality. They seem to just work great together. Frank, very humble as well. He said he was doing the setup today for. Uh, for Fred tomorrow, <laughs> um, we had Frank on. So you've got a really interesting dynamic. You've got Frank Slootman, who is just a hard-driving CEO, really loves his people, loves growth, loves to build nations, loves to build companies, um, loves to compete, really, really aggressive, spending like crazy, really solid executive in Mike Scarpelli, very, very solid CFO, just building a great team, Jeff. Um, you know, hey, we, we, we saw this last year, we certainly predicted more. This is not surprising at all, uh, and I think it's you know, more to come. Yeah, and I, it, it, it feels more businessy to me. It just feels more serious. Maybe it's the venue. It feels like you know, they're buttoned down. I think uh, Frank said he spent the first couple of years he was there putting the infrastructure in place for them to really scale and grow and, and doing a lot of inside stuff, and now you know they've turned outside. They're hiring like crazy. What do you say? Uh, Mike said 150 people in sales and marketing uh, that were hired in the last quarter, 270 people altogether, or 230. Yeah, I think uh, they're, so they're growing really they're aggressively. They're targeting 300 this year. Uh, I think that was the number they put out. It's, so it's it's uh, it's good. You know, Jeffrey Moore had you know we had a great guest as always. We get we get super guests on the cube. Jeffrey Moore really you know enterprise plat uh, enablement platform. Uh, a little different way to look at it. Uh, Sheila that we just had on, is talking about applications as services, which we don't hear, really hear much. And just the fact that there's services that wrap around everything. And, and we've had a lot of discussion around TAM and how do you define it and their market expansion beyond where they really were focused on yesterday. And there's a lot of upside here. There's a lot of places for them to go. You know, I, I want to get some analysts on. We don't have, uh, a lot of times we do these events, we have analysts on. I'd love to get the analyst perspective. Uh, because it's, uh, I mean, I tell you, you talk to the customers, you talk to the partners, 
obviously you talk to the executives, you get this very strong story. I, here's what I don't understand. You read the Gartner Magic Quadrant on IT service management, and you know, ServiceNow obviously a leader, but there seems to be a dissonance in terms of when you read that, you know, you got BMC, Remedy, they're talking how you know, BMC has, has you know, uh, updated the code, and gone mobile, all this stuff. We hear a different story from the ServiceNow customers now, so that's why I'd love to get the analyst perspective. Uh, this is not my wheelhouse, uh, um, so we're going to snoop around, try to find some, some get folks a couple to, tomorrow maybe. to bring that in, uh, because that's, I mean, you know, again, I'm looking for, okay, what am I missing here? Uh, these guys are smoking, customers are all behind it, the ecosystem's growing like crazy, but then the positioning and the Gartner Magic Quadrant is just not, doesn't make sense to me. And I've talked to some guys about it and they sort of shook their head and said, yeah, I think they're wrong. Or, but, but, but I have a lot of respect for, for the work that Gartner does there, so I'd like to get their take. Um, Chris Pope had an interesting number. He said that, I'm probably misquoting, we'll have to go back and check the tape, as all good uh, coaches do, that 80 to 90% of the work, the groups that they serve is, is formerly paper-based workflow. Yeah, that's, that's a, amazing. That's a giant number. And then the other that's thing that really struck true. me is that the, the systems that they're replacing uh, are generally 10 to 15 years old. So when you think about that, that is a forever uh, in the world that we live in today and the technology and the software and things that have evolved so far. So right. you would think the opportunity for, for replacement there is just Well, that paper-based comment is interesting. There's an old saying, you know, the paperless uh, bathroom will come before the paperless office. <laughs> But maybe not. Maybe, maybe we'll not. I don't know. I don't other. know how many how much paper you print at your house anymore. But you know the paper thing has has slowed down. And and uh, and again, it's as we talked about too um, about the new, not the millennials, but what do we call them? The entitled. Uh, you know the kids that have grown up that are coming into the workforce that like to work this way. So I think there's some there's some good uh, good stuff up there. And really, the other one I love too is, is the, the Martha Hiller. Which, you know, trying to transform these businesses because a lot of their value proposition, a lot of what everybody's talking about is can CIOs transform their business and the, the bright shiny object above the water with big data and cloud and then the really ugly stuff under the water that you can't see that you're beholden to. But it does sound like with some of the guests we've had from Symantec and, and Safeway that these guys are moving. They're not necessarily letting themselves be encumbered with what was in the past. Yeah, you're seeing the, the you know, Jeffrey Moore crossing the chasm, the, you know, the, the early adopters, the tip of the spear, you're seeing a lot of those folks that are leading transformations here at this event. You know, we've been tracking them um, in, 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 in crowd chat. Uh, the other, the other uh, discussion that's really going on, um, sort of a sideline, but it was really yesterday, financial analyst meeting, and as well at the, the industry analyst meeting, is the whole notion of TAM. When ServiceNow started, uh, they came out, a lot of people questioned the, the TAM, the total available market, to be only a billion and a half. Um, they had to do a lot of explaining, and, and I think it was, it was hard because they didn't have the proof points. Uh, but essentially, they extended that into this notion of IT service management, which was still, you know, whatever, multi-billion dollar market, maybe, you know, four, four or five billion. Um, and the interesting thing about ServiceNow, they're going after uh, global 2000. They've got about 18% penetration in that Global 2000. What they've done is they've expanded in, in a couple of directions. One is, is the IT operations management, actually integrating with Puppet and Chef and, and validating that changes have been made, um, that entire workflow, um, you know, uh, quantifying that in the CMDB. The other is, is uh, enterprise service management. In other words, going beyond IT, app creator last year sort of enabled a lot of this. And then even business management is something that you're going to hear more and more about, which is the analytics piece. Those little pieces, they're not competing with the big data guys, they're not competing with you know, uh, Workday and HR, but they're helping to, to uh, automate that, that workflow. Uh, you know, they're not competing directly with Salesforce, but they sort of bump into them you know, conceptually. So you're seeing ServiceNow just participate in all these little pockets, uh, and the reason is, and Fred Luddy will talk about this tomorrow, is because it's a platform. You can actually do anything right. with the platform, and that's what we heard last year. I'm sure we're going to ask him about that tomorrow, but it expands the TAM in ways that are hard to predict how big it is. We talked to Frank Slootman about the Salesforce analogy. A lot of people really didn't understand how big Salesforce actually could be. People were thinking about it as a Siebel replacement, 
it's obviously become much more. And, and Mike did, like you said, the, the, the laser focus on the Global 2000 because they know that once they're in there, they're going to they're gonna continue to expand in more seats even within the initial departments as well as more functions. So uh, they're very laser focused. It sounds like they're delivering to their customers. So it's, uh, it's exciting times and everyone also seems to feel pretty good about the recent kind of corrections in the market that those were, they were, they were timely things that run out ahead a little bit and uh, so that's not all bad. So we got a great lineup today, or today we did. So let's look at uh, some of the guys we have coming on tomorrow. And this is all on siliconangle.tv. If you click on the, the banner for uh, Knowledge 14, we've gotten most of the schedule there published, so you can figure out when you want to tune in. So we've got Fred Luddy to kick it off, uh, Shane Jackson, VP Marketing, uh, Robert Federick, uh, an architect from ABV, um, Bill McVicker from Accenture, uh, Bart Murphy from CareWorks. So again, what, one of the things we love about doing the service now shows we get a lot of customers on. Uh, a lot of, of the shows that we cover, they don't get us customers, uh, but we love to get the customers. Uh, Walker White from BDNA has already stopped by a couple times. I think he's excited about coming on theCUBE. Matt French, uh, VP Strategy from ServiceNow. Uh, Jason Wohan is coming back from uh, Cloud Sherpas, who I think we had on earlier today. So uh, a great cast of characters. Uh, Dan McGee's coming on too. Dan McGee's oh, Dan coming McGee. on. Yep. Uh, Dan McGee's got some interesting data. I hope we can get him to share with us um, on how uh, ServiceNow is performing. Maybe we can get him to talk, maybe show a little leg, talk about how they're performing relative to some of the other cloud providers. I'm not sure he's willing to do that. <laughs> uh, but ServiceNow uh, I just, you know, is interesting because they look, they're beginning to look anyway as, at downtime as not the, the light on the server but what the user sees, and that's very unique. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, it should so. be a great day. Yeah. Should be a great day. All right, Jeff, well listen, it's been great, uh, as always, working with you. Uh, ServiceNow, awesome show. May maybe see John Furrier tomorrow, he might be doing a drive-by, I uh, hope so. And wall-to-wall um, -wall coverage here. This is theCUBE. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, you can tw tweet us, I'm at DeVellante, at, at Jeff, Jeff Frick. Frick, and uh, send us questions. Uh, go to CrowdChat dot net slash no 14. That's the crowd chat that we have going on. It'll be going on this entire show. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.